Hi, and welcome to PHQ, questions from the personality hacker community. My name is Joel Mark Witt. And I'm Antonia Dodge. And let's get right to our question this week. Hi, this is Karen. Um, I have a question. 15 years ago, I was a pretty strong ESTJ. Um, and then about five years ago, I would say that I had a midlife crisis. I'm in my early 50s now. And since then, I've uh, tested as a really happy ESFP. Um, I enjoyed your ESFP deep dive podcast and what you said about outsourcing your values. That really resonated with me. My question is this. Can somebody like me be so out of touch with my cognitive system that I really tested as a different type or did I change? What was going on there? I would really appreciate your insight. Thanks. Thanks, Karen, for the question. What you're what you're talking about, you know, you're talking about changing types in your life, going through life, feeling like you're a certain type, and then something changes, you either mature or a big event happens in your life, and you feel like the type is different, like you emerge as a different type. And I think, you know, if you're a new listener listening to this conversation, us answering Karen's question here, we're going to talk about cognitive functions around personality, because this is really where cognitive functions come into play. If you know anything about you know type dynamics and cognitive functions, this is the sweet spot of really understanding, you know, am I an introvert, an extrovert, an ambivert? Am I an ESTJ? I feel like now I'm an ESFP. What happened? Did I switch? Like, can my personality change or does it develop? I think this is really a lot of people's question here. So thank you, Karen, for the question. And let's jump right into, uh, into this discussion. So the basic question of do we change types as we age or do we change our personality type or can we change our personality type is I think it's a really valid and often asked question in the Myers-Briggs community. There are a lot of people who claim to have changed types. And so you get a lot of people going, I used to be a so-and-so and now I'm, I'm this type. Or, or claim to be two types. Or claim to be two types simultaneously. And that usually is, it usually comes from not understanding how cognitive functions work to some extent, because when you just look at the four letter code, the four letter dichotomy, there's going to be qualities of all four of those components that each of us have in our cognitive function stack. It's just which one is showing up in a more obvious way at certain times. So the general theory around Myers-Briggs, so this is just like sort of the baseline theory, is that you don't change types. Your type is hardwired into your mind at birth. And there is some burgeoning evidence to indicate this might be true. There's some burgeoning evidence to indicate that, say, introversion and extroversion is hardwired into your mind from birth. So we're going down a track scientifically that is giving us some indication that there are certain things that are just intrinsic parts of our personality. And that's, of course, assuming that Myers-Briggs is true to begin with and not just a model of how we experience reality. And it is. As far as I'm concerned, it's just a model. It's not empirically true. So if you're going to look at it as the rules of the model itself, once you adopt the model and go, it may or may not be true, full stop, but I'm going to pretend as if it's true. And so I'm going to follow the rules of the model pretending that it's true. True, And the rules of the model are that you don't change types, that different aspects of your personality come out over time. Now, in your specific situation of having tested as an ESTJ and now testing as an ESFP, that's actually following a trend that is very common to people uh, who used to test a certain type and now test a different type. And that is they were very identified with what's called your tertiary cognitive function. For ESFPs, the tertiary or what we call the 10-year-old position in the car model is extroverted thinking. Extroverted thinking is a place that ESFPs and ENFPs go when they are trying to get things done, when they're trying to be effective in the outside world, they're trying to make things happen. And because it shares the same attitude as their dominant process for ESFPs of extroverted sensing, it's a very natural tool to grab because they're both extroverted. And if you want to stay in the outside world and the outside world is your playground and you don't want to have to think about anything internally for a while, then it's very common to over-identify with that tertiary or 10-year-old position because it stays in the world you're comfortable in, which is extroversion for your type. 
So it's not uncommon for ESFPs to have a lot of rela- like a very strong relationship, a very conscious relationship with their extroverted thinking process, which is what gets things done. It's what keeps them industrious. It's the part of you that's organized. A lot of ESFPs will go, I'm a perceiver, but I'm actually quite organized. How does that work? And it's because they're very identified with extroverted thinking. Now, as we age, as we become more mature, We start to build a stronger and more conscious relationship with our auxiliary process or what we call the co-pilot in the car model. And for ESFPs, that would be introverted feeling. Now, introverted feeling for ESFPs can be kind of a scary place to go because it's a lot less predictable. It's a very, especially as you start to develop more and more, it feels almost emotionally erratic. It feels like you're no longer in control of your life and your world because now you're consulting your feelings all the time and feelings are not predictable. It's not as predictable. It's not as, it's, it doesn't feel as reliable a tool as extroverted thinking, which feels like it has a lot of predictable results. And on top of that, the world rewards you for extroverted thinking. Extroverted thinking is when you like perform extremely well on a project at your job. And so you get all this accolades and all these rewards for having used extroverted thinking to get to the end of that project. Introverted feeling, not so much. The world does not reward introverted feeling as much. So generally for people of your type, building a stronger relationship with introverted feeling is a maturing process that happens over time. And so instead of testing out as having a lot of extroverted thinking, even if you're taking a test that isn't acknowledging or specifically testing for cognitive functions, the tests themselves will still have a lot of language in there trying to determine if you're a thinker or a judger. And if you're using a lot of extroverted thinking, then your behaviors are going to manifest as a lot of thinking behaviors and a lot of judging behaviors. So you'll start, you know, marking down those bubbles, right? You'll, you'll start answering the questions as if those make a, you know, reflect you a lot because your behavior showing up that way. And then you'll end up testing out as an ESTJ. Then over time, as you develop a stronger and more conscious relationship with introverted feeling, you're getting more in touch with your feelings. You're giving yourself more permission to be spontaneous. You're giving yourself more per- permission to have that joie de vivre and that go with what delights you piece, which is very, um, I would say a marker of ESFPs a lot. Once you get into that space where you're a lot more comfortable with introverted feeling and you go back to the test, now those thinking and judging questions don't seem to reflect you as much because you're looking at your behavior and your behavior is now a lot more improvisational. It's a lot more go with what feels right and resonates with you in the moment. And so it makes sense that as you age and mature, an ESFP that once tested as an ESTJ would now be landing in what is more ac- a more accurate reflection of their personality type. Yeah, I I mean, I tested out a long time ago as a thinker because I over-identified. I'm an ENFP in the Myers-Briggs system. And I too, Karen, over-identify with that that extroverted thinking tertiary or 10-year-old process. And so I showed up answering questions on tests, very thinker-like. This is years ago before I understood how all this works. I didn't have an awareness around cognitive functions. And what's so great about cognitive functions is you know, are you an introvert? Are you an extrovert? Are you a thinker? Are you a feeler? Are you an intuitive? Are you a sensor? Are you a judge or a perceiver? You're all of those things. It's just which order does it show up in your personality? Which is the dominant? Which is the secondary? Which is the tertiary? Which is the inferior? In which way does this show up for you? And and because we go through life and we have these different relationships with these parts of us, we express ourselves in certain places in life differently depending on the situation, our age, our experience, our understanding of the system itself, or whatever. And that's why it looks like to the outside world or even to ourselves that we're changing type or we're a different type now than maybe we were in the past. But just in a, all that's really happening is we're expressing the full essence of our personality. We're expressing all of ourselves in the world. And I think that's really the thing to understand is we're all of these things, just how much and to what degree are we expressing these things inside of us? Yeah, what's our preferences? What are our, are the things we're relying on? I think one one thing to mention as well, because I mean, I'm also making the assumption here that you are an ESFP that used to test as an ESTJ. It is also possible, and sometimes this happens, where it's not that you over-identified with your tertiary process. It's not that you were testing out as the wrong type before. It's that as you're maturing, you're also exploring different aspects of your personality 
that we naturally do like as we get older because those first two processes, the dominant and auxiliary, become well-covered territory. And so as we age, we start to dip into our 10-year-old or tertiary process in a healthy way and explore that more and more. And then eventually we go to the inferior or the three-year-old process and start exploring that more and more in a very healthy way. So the alternative is also that you are an ESTJ, but now you're in a time of life where you're exploring your tertiary process of extroverted intuition, your 10-year-old process, and your three-year-old or inferior process of introverted feeling. So that might also have you showing up as a slightly different type. And so it's more about what, like, what time period are you in? Which of the functions in your function stack are you developing a new relationship with or exploring and really experiencing that piece of yourself? And that's in your conscious awareness now and you're seeing your behavior show up differently. And so now when you engage with the digital or online test, then now your results are different. And so that's the other piece of it. So yeah, this is one of the reasons why online tests are so difficult to make accurate because we are constantly, we're not, we're constantly adapting creatures. We're not static. We are in constant motion, discovering more and more of ourselves. And then whatever lens we're looking through at the moment, because of how delightful that particular time period is, or because we've learned more about ourselves, or we're just getting outside of our usual box, those are all going to influence how we answer the question. So Let's pretend you are an ESFP that used to test out as an ESTJ. That's actually very normal. It's not It's not a crazy thing that that happens. You didn't necessarily change types if you're looking at it through the model of Myers-Briggs that indicates we don't change types. That's actually something that happens very commonly. And congratulations on having found and settled on your best fit type and knowing what direction to go for your personal development journey. I think that that's fantastic. Thanks, Karen, for the question. If you're listening and you have a question for us, you can ask a question for Antonio and myself over at personalityhacker.com forward slash questions. Our preference is you record it so we can play it on the air. But you can also type one in into the form there and it'll get sent to us and we can have Addison or someone else read it live on the air for us. But if you want to ask a question, that's a great place to engage with us at personalityhacker.com forward slash questions. Also, I want to encourage you to join our community of like minds over at facebook.com forward slash personality hacker or twitter.com forward slash personality hack. My name is Joel Mark Witt. And I'm Antonia Dodge. You've been listening to PHQ questions from the personality hacker community. We'll talk with you on the next episode. 